Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe where we help and heal one day at a time. We're going to talk about trauma bond. Uh, are narcissists ever able to become bonded like that? Um, trauma bonds occur with intermittent reinforcement, uh, sometimes praise, sometimes taking away the attention or adoration, um, where it's inconsistent. Um, often uh, narcissists um, don't really care at the deep level to become trauma bonded, but sometimes they do. Um, and they'll do it sometimes if they were a child of a narcissistic parent where they're craving that adoration usually for that bond to happen between a narcissist um is between two narcissists because narcissists are uh unpredictable um they're very good at the intermittent the mind games uh the things that cause the chemical disturbances in the brain um so they are lacking the empathetic part of their brain it, it's it's shrunk um but they also have the other parts in their brains um that become uh traumatized um our amygdala swells because of what they've done to us um and they do have an amygdala too um so it depends on how the the bond happens um theirs could swell too uh causing that that uh uneasy feeling the trauma bond the needing to latch on um to to get the reinforcement we want the love back uh that we thought that we had um but they uh have a different um, view on it to where they're um, like if they were told growing up um, that you know they were worth something and then it, at the parent starts to devalue them because maybe they didn't achieve what the parent had expected um, they can form a trauma bond they can reach out latch on um, that's why sometimes in these relationships uh, they do get obsessive um, sometimes maybe they did have a trauma bond um, but usually um, in the type of relationships i was in uh, and i think usually the people that have been replying, it kind of seems like they were in this same type of situation where um, we've always been available to them, always willing to work through things. Um, and this is something that I found very interesting is it had said, you cannot love if you don't fear losing something. Um, so maybe that child is, is in fear of losing um, the parent's adoration. You only have you know, one set of parents or, you know, with step families, but uh, technically only have um, one set of parents or, or caregivers. Um, and same in the, uh, you know, romantic relationship. It's usually one, sometimes you guys are polyamorous, but um, they, uh, they go through those intermittent periods. And when we, if you're like me, um, you're always available. And in the beginning, um, that was the facade that was created um, that, you know, we're always here for each other. Things are great. You know, we'll work through anything. Uh, we'll give more than we get. And so we're both kind of love bombing each other with everything's just going great. Um, and then the narcissist uh, starts to de devalue us. Um, and so we try to work it out. We try to work through things and they see that as weakness. Um, and like I said, uh, if, if that's correct, that you can't really love something unless you fear losing it, um, they don't fear they're gonna lose us. They get kind of cocky. Uh, I've seen a lot of you guys have said it uh, where your ex is like, uh, yeah, you're just never gonna leave. Or if you're even in the relationship now, they have this sense of entitlement um, uh, arrogance that we're not going to leave so they don't fear losing us um so uh you know in order to love fear losing something like um, we develop um a deep bond with our children um because we fear you know uh crib death uh sids uh we fear this we fear that um uh, you know um the bond is created that way because we fear losing something uh so precious to us um so the supply to them, um, as long as it's consistent, as long as they don't fear that they're losing us, as long as it doesn't seem like a challenge, um, they don't develop a trauma bond, but um, they enjoy our supply, they enjoy being with us, but they don't fear losing us. And that's why they take advantage of us. They feel they can get away with anything and they already have that false sense of reality um, and and just the way they twist and turn everything um it's it's hard 
uh, to maintain a relationship with them because we're already scared that uh, we're walking on eggshells because we feel we're going to lose them. Um, and that's part of the reason we kind of love so hard for them is we really started to fear. It's almost like, you know, every day is like things going to go okay today. So we're um, becoming more and more bonded. Um, because we're already invested, it's already something important to us. Um, and then uh, trying to understand, you know, uh, if you're in a, a marriage or living together with a narcissist, you would think that they fear losing you. Um, but what is it that they fear losing? Is it necessarily you? Or is it they fear losing the home? They fear the adoration from their friends because they're seen as um, the, the great husband or wife when nobody knows what's going on behind great do uh, closed doors. What exactly is it that they're fearing? You know, if my house burnt down, uh, am I really upset about my house or am I upset that all my daughter's baby pictures are burnt? You know, what what is it that I really feared about this house fire? Just like them, what are they really fearing they lost? Was it you or was it the status? Um, so that's where it gets confusing. We we can never really know what's important to them. Um, the way they treat us can kind of give us a little insight of how important we were. You know, um, I do know that uh, this starts getting really, really confusing, <laughs> understanding narcissists, because they do push us away in order for us to pull them back. Like, that's what they're wanting. They push us away, so we pull them back because they want to feel that we won't abandon them because they have abandonment issues a lot of times um and what we're taking is like do they care or not care and um staying in a narcissistic relationship they they have these cycles um a lot of times they're predictable um they're toxic uh and and sometimes we don't keep track of when they're going to come so we feel blindsided about it but in hindsight you can kind of see patterns uh my two exes every time we got close we broke up uh, every time things settle down because their brain uh waves start changing when things are calm um they don't like it uh so narcissists when uh they become trauma bonded it's because they've gone through that same intermittent stuff that we've gone through um so it happens with other narcissists that they can become trauma bonded um, because it's unpredictable. Um, so it's not increasing their empathy. It's not increasing um, like a love, uh, but it, it's like um, that trauma bond, you know, where you love your abuser. Uh, you know, you hear these kids who were kidnapped and tortured and this and that, but you know, um, the kidnapper was the only person feeding them. Uh, and they're like, that was so sweet. They made sure I wouldn't starve. And they start developing a love for their abuser because they became like reliant on them. And uh, it's really crazy dynamics, understanding uh, how people work in their heads. Um, they have trained us to become kind of dependent on them, us, on them, because they knock us down so much that um, we we've become isolated uh we're we're um so starved for affection that that um we almost see it as they're they're the supplier for for squashing our pain because we start to see it as uh in a sense that that's where the pain is coming from and instead of going away from the pain moving on with our lives um we latch on to let's fix this and then i won't hurt um, but, but that's like, uh, I did a video where I said it was like one spoiled apple will ruin the bush bushel. They're, they're easy to discard, uh, as, um, the apples in their life, the people in their life, um, become infected with their toxic, infectious thought process that they mess up our brain chemistry, cause us physical brain damage. Um, but yes, a narcissist can go through some of the same traumas that we have gone through. Um, they're more dismissive on things, uh, usually less tolerant, um, but sometimes uh, depending on who is important to them, how important it is, whether um, they wanna be like the other kids at school, they wanna be loved by their parents, they don't feel right uh, that they're getting what they're entitled to, um, they might latch onto a parent 
a narcissistic parent, but they've already developed narcissistic personality. So they'll latch onto each other. Um, and they're, they're different than us on um, how it forms. Um, theirs will form more in like an entitlement. Ours forms more in the loss of a love. Um, so the empathy part is still not there. But as far as the trauma bond, um, the, the craving for the dopamine and, and, and the things that go on in, in the, um, not the cerebral cortex, but in the amygdala, amygdala um, that's where, where it happens. And they still have that part of that brain that, uh, you know, um, does release more chemicals during their relaxed state. Um, but they do still have that where they could get trauma bonded. doesn't happen all that often. They're easily able to just move on. Um, and also, uh, usually if that trauma bond is going to happen, uh, it'll happen later on in life, um, in, in a relationship and not necessarily with the parents, but in a relationship. Um, and it's interesting how they will often pick somebody much younger than them, uh, because as they get older, they want to be seen as, um, somehow special and unique because that's what they think they are so they kind of turn over uh instead of people looking at them um they get the supply that they look at the new supply as attractive or something special about the new supply um or that they're able to achieve and hold on to a, a younger mate um so they hold on to that mate because people are like, wow, you must be great because you have that. Uh, and earlier on in their 20s or whatever, it's like, wow, that person's great, that person's great. And as this person starts to age, uh, starts to become more uh, self um, conscious, uh, they, they latch on to the supplies that they need um, for their, their sake. And it's just really kind of interesting that uh, they can become trauma bonded. Most don't. Um, it, it's because they've trained us so well that we're always there. And um, if they don't fear losing us, uh, they don't. They don't love us. Their, their uh, false sense of um, I've I've invested in this object. This object's not going to leave because it's mine. And. So can they love if they're trauma bonded? Um, they still, like I said, there's varying, varying depths of how much they can love. Um, and there's different degrees, uh, different types of love, friendship love, romantic love, uh, familiar love. Um, so it depends on your definition of love. But as far as like your agape love, where um, it's unconditional and, and you're so concerned about the person and you're willing to work through things, uh, they don't have enough empathy to, to develop those kind of true uh, relationships like you would in a marriage where to become one. Um, and and their their need for supply um, to get that they, they got the empathy thing going on they got the uh, amygdala thing going on they got a lot going on in their brain it's not fully functioning because just like us uh, both of us have received brain damage they gave it to us somebody else gave it to them. Um, and it's like snowballing out of control. So that's why if you stay with a narcissist, remember it, they do cause actual brain damage. Um, you'll see CPTSD. Uh, uh, it's terrible to go through. Um, you know, uh, some people uh, really struggle with it. Uh, I struggle with, um, you know, uh, somebody had called it shock waves. And uh, that's pretty much what it is. There's a, like a heightened sense of what you're going through. And um, it's, it's, it's like, it just comes out. Uh, it, it, you can't squash it. Uh, you just have to like refocus. So the best way uh, to get over a narcissist is, um, and also to get back at them, if you want to get back at them without really even doing anything except working on yourself, is to just move forward. Um, know that everything's going to be okay. Um, you're definitely not going to be worse off without them. You're going to be better off, or at least the same, at least the same. So what do you have to lose? Either something worse and um, it will get better. It does take time, just like if you lost a loved one. Um, there's a difference 
and how long people take to grieve, uh, take your time to grieve it. It is a death of a relationship, um, something important to us, something that doesn't make sense and could be so fixed. Um, but it's like a cancer. And um, it, 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 it's a cancer where you can never fully remove um, that little tiny piece of uh, like an infection, we'll call it an infection. Um, so you take everything out and that um, cancerous uh, portion will start to grow and grow and grow and you can take it out again and do the love bombing, kind of fix it, but then it's gonna keep going. And it's a type of cancer uh, in a sense um, that's always gonna come back. There's, there's no cure for it. There's no cure for narcissism. Um, so even when they do try, um, they're, they're that little rotten apple. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little, little piece of something that's rotten to ruin everything. Um, they're not willing to work through things. Um, but I just thought it was interesting that they can be trauma bonded. Uh, it doesn't often happen, but it is usually in where they're dealing with another narcissist. And I also thought it was interesting that since they can't uh, have the empathy, which is the agape love. Um, if they don't have the depth because of the brain damage that they've gone through, it's gone. That part of their brain is shrunk. So it's not like working on something, um, that brain tissue is just going to come back. It's gone. And, um, you know, can they change? Uh, they can act different, but, um, just like if, if a portion of my brain on my sense of smell is gone and that part's not going to grow back, no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be able to smell again. So I just thought it was interesting and um, please comment below if there's anything you'd like to talk about, please let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.